Hi, and welcome to Duck Tales, where we go behind the scenes of DuckDuckGo and discuss the stories, technology, and people that help provide privacy tools for everyone. In each episode, you'll hear from employees about our vision, product updates, approach to AI, or how we operate as a company. Today, we're going to chat about the online privacy problem and DuckDuckGo's web protections. I'm Christina. I'm on the marketing team, and today I'll be interviewing Peter. Peter, would you like to introduce yourself, maybe what team you're on and where you spend a lot of your time? Absolutely. Hi, Christina. I'm Peter. I'm on the product team at DuckDuckGo, uh, which I typically work on our browsers and our privacy protection. So happy and excited to talk about the mystifying world of online tracking and privacy today. Awesome. Likewise. Well, let's jump in. So I think a lot of people would be surprised to hear just how much information about them is being tracked online. Some seemingly irrelevant to what they're doing and some pretty creepy in how detailed it is and how all the dots are being connected. Can you give some examples of the pervasiveness of this tracking? Absolutely. Uh, you know, anyone I talk to about online privacy, the first thing they'll tell me, and I'm sure you've heard the same, is microphones must be listening to them. Um, yeah, everyone can give an example of a conversation in their household where not too long thereafter, they're seeing advertisements, creepy advertisements, following them around online based on, you know, what it is they were talking about. Um, and the reality is the amount of surveillance that happens is like microphones are listening to you everywhere, but the methods are not actually microphones. Um, the methods are actual trackers on websites, on search engines and browsers and apps, which we'll talk about uh, that are always collecting information about you. Um, so just to break those down a little bit, um, most people, if you think about the, you know, someone in their daily life, they're gonna go do a search online, whether it's on their smartphone or on their computer, the search engine that most people use is, of course, Google, most dominant search engine in the world. Um, they collect basically anything and everything about you. Um, and so that search engine is one source of this data collection. And then um, the browser you use to actually do those searches, um, often owned by some of the same companies um, like Google, um, like Google Chrome specifically, these browsers also directly collect information about you. So if you're not using a private search or a private browser, a lot of information is directly collected about you. But then, of course, after you do a search and you get onto a website, the websites themselves have trackers embedded in them. Um, and specifically, we've done actually a lot of analysis on this. 85% of the top websites on the web have Google trackers included in them, and about 36% have Meta or Facebook trackers overall. And these trackers are pieces of code that run on the websites that send information about you, what you're doing on the site, what products you're looking at, what's in your shopping cart, and so on, to companies that are not the owners uh, of the websites. The same is true of your mobile apps. So just as it happens, the surveillance on websites, it happens in your mobile apps. Uh, in fact, 96% of the popular top free Android apps uh, send data to third party companies. And of those, 87% send data to Google, 68% send data to, you guessed it, Meta and Facebook, top two trackers uh, overall. Uh, and then, of course, there's other sources too. When you use emails, emails contain trackers. When you open them, little code fires, it tells the email sender when you open their email, where you were when they opened the email. Uh, and then there's a lot of other scenarios too. Like if you go to the store, you know, what do, what do they ask you when you make a purchase at the store? Can we have your email address? And you know, they say, oh, it's for a loyalty program. You can get points or whatever it is. But the reality is they're actually usually taking that email address and then directly uploading it to Facebook, to Instagram, uh, so that they can buy advertisements targeting you later. And so you combine all this and you have this pervasive uh, targeting, uh, tracking and then targeting that's happening that makes it feel like ultimately there must be microphones listening to you, but it's just happening uh, throughout your day overall. It's pretty chilling that I could be on almost any site or Android app or reading email or at the mall buying a new shirt <laughs> and companies like Google are tracking me. So what type of information are they collecting? 
So they're they're typically after uh, two two sets of things. And when I say they, I, go, I use Google and, and Meta, Facebook as the examples. But there's there's thousands of other ad tech companies that are often in the mix trying to collect something about you as well. Uh, they're looking first for an identifier. So they want something that's going to be able to tie what you're doing to an identity so they know who it is. Or even if they might not know who exactly it is, they want to know it's the same person. So, um, of course, e email address could be an identifier. Your name could be an identifier. Phone number could be an identifier. Those are the obvious ones that they would want. Um, and by the way, this is why so many websites try to get you to log in on those websites, um, and often with your Google login, because then they can tie all this, whatever you're doing on that website, to your identity. Uh, and then, of course, I think most people have heard of cookies, you know, and seen cookie banners come up when they visit websites. Uh, cookies are another form of identifier. Might not be your name or your email address, but it is a unique code. And so that when these trackers that are across all these websites see the same cookie identifiers, across those websites, they go, oh, this is the same person. And so whatever you did on this site, we can link it to whatever you did on this other site. Uh, and then there's a couple other identifiers such as uh, digital fingerprints, uh, which really use information about your device, like your screen resolution and your battery, your, literally the state of your headphone jack on your smartphones. They piece this together into a digital fingerprint that is unique. And so if they see the same set of attributes about your device, on a different website or a different app, again, they can infer, oh, this is the same person overall. So that's the first thing they want, identifiers. And then the second thing they want is something about you, behavior, interests, actions. Um, and so, you know, it might be as high level as Christina's into snowboarding, um, but it could be, you know, as low level as the specific things that you had in your shopping cart, what you purchased in real life in Home Depot, last week. Um, whatever it is, they basically want to collect it, put it together into a behavioral profile that they can then turn around to advertisers and offer very hyper targeting uh, to these uh, individuals overall. And just to give you a sort of creepy example, we've done a lot of studies on this with websites and apps. And we looked at um, health websites and health applications, ones where you may look up health conditions or prescription drugs. And we literally observe these the trackers included in these apps or websites, sending information about your health conditions, your sexual orientation, uh, and even prescription drug information to third-party companies uh, overall, things that people would be absolutely shocked uh, to hear overall. That's definitely not information I want shared without my permission. Um, and while historically I might have thought something like, oh, battery life or headphone jacks, whatever, don't care. When you start piecing it together to make this fingerprint like you're talking about, yeah, it gets super scary. You know, I've heard some people say, oh, it's impossible to do anything when it comes to these giant companies and all these clever ways of collecting information. Anything I could do would just be a drop in the ocean. How is DuckDuckGo thinking about a user-led approach to solving the privacy problem? Yeah, DuckDuckGo, obviously, uh, most people know us through our private search engine. Um, and our, of course, our private search doesn't collect information about users. That's what sets it apart. Uh, and even our advertisements themselves on DuckDuckGo search are just based on what you're searching for. But um, we realize that protecting people in, in their searches is not enough. We needed to protect people's privacy more broadly. Uh, and so that's why uh, DuckDuckGo introduced some years back um, browsers as well. And so you could use our search and our browser to more broadly protect you. Um, let me let me just share my screen a little bit here um, just to show Great. you the sort of comparison we put together. So we put together uh, a comparison for people. And I, I won't go over all the details. Uh, and you, you feel free to take a look at this later, uh, DuckDuckGo.com slash compare dash privacy. But um, basically, when, you ha when you're trying to protect privacy broadly through all these threats I stepped through, you really need protections for each one of those threats and the methods of data collection. And so that's what we try to in incorporate into our browser overall. And so you'll see our browser has a bunch of different web tracking protections. We block these third-party trackers that are on the websites. We block link tracking, so little codes embedded in the links you click on that can reveal information about you. Uh, we block the cookies, the third-party cookies that are used to track you, um, and, and a lot more. You can kind of see, you know, going down this list, all the sort of comprehensive protections we have in, in addition to, of course, the private search that I mentioned. 
And you can see that comparison, you know, relative to Chrome here. Um, most people in the world from a browser perspective are using Chrome. And you can see out of the box, Chrome does not protect you from really any of these threats. Um, and a lot of these companies that, you know, own browsers like Chrome will say, well, we offer user choice and, you know, you can configure things to protect your data how you want. And the reality is most people will not understand the details of all these tracking methods and they won't know how to go into the, the settings in Chrome and configure it, you know, granularly to stop some of these things. Uh, and many of these things you can't actually prevent uh, using Chrome settings as well. And so the DuckDuckGo browser, we try to make it very comprehensive and it really gives you a broad set of protections uh, in a bunch of scenarios. And that extends to even email and on Android protecting you in other apps, um, you know, when you're using other apps on your device uh, with their app tracking protection. Um, so feel free to take a look at this, scroll through it and compare whatever browser you currently use to what DuckDuckGo offers overall. That's a great chart. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yes. You know, also helps unpack some of the, uh, the the privacy washing that's been happening, right? Do you want to touch on that briefly? Absolutely. So, you know, we, we often describe um, how other browsers say, you know, we offer privacy, we're private, um, or we offer user choice. And we describe that as privacy washing in that they're making you think that they're private, but in fact, they're really not offering you a comprehensive suite of protections that is necessary to stop all the data collection in these different circumstances uh, overall. So don't be fooled by a lot of the, you know, sort of fancy advertisements you see, uh, you know, do take, go do your research, use a comparison chart like ours, um, we tried to really dig in on the details. If you if you want to dig in granularly and see how, exactly how it works on you know Windows and Mac, and we actually offer learn more links here. You can click through into our help pages, uh, and we offer you know full explanations on how it all works uh, in detail for those that are interested. Awesome. Yeah, it certainly seems like there's a lot of intentional conflation of security and privacy and every company, even beyond browsers, want to talk about how private they are, even though most are far from it. Um, can uh, Maybe you want to stop sharing your screen and then can you leave us with some parting thoughts for those people who still may not be convinced, who still may say, ah, privacy isn't needed because I have nothing to hide. Why else should they care? Yeah, actually, I, I won't I won't stop sharing the screen because I'll show something, um, you know, to illustrate this a little bit further. OK, great. so, uh, of course, you know, stopping the data collection itself will lead to all kinds of benefits for you. No creepy ads following you around online. But there's a lot of other benefits that um, come along with these privacy protections. Just to illustrate one of those, um, I think, you know, I'll use a particular website here, um, but it's not you know, anything out of the ordinary, you've all seen these cookie banners that come up on websites all the time. Some of them are huge like this. They take up most of the page before you can even use the website. You have to read all this legalese and then make a decision about cookie usage. Most people don't understand any of these details and they will click off of this as soon as possible. But the reality is if you click, yes, I accept, what you're typically doing is giving the authorization for these cookies, these identifiers I mentioned earlier, to be used to track you and store information about you uh, overall. And this screen is an annoyance. I think everyone's experienced this on every website you go to. DuckDuckGo out of the box offers something called um, cookie pop-up protection. I turned it off here for the purpose of illustrating that cookie banner, but I'll turn it on so you can see, and this is the default that you'll get in DuckDuckGo so you can see this benefit. Now, next time you go to this website or in general, when you visit sites like this, DuckDuckGo, you can see it came up and then this cookies managed at the top. We are automatically seeing that this cookie banner came up and selecting the most private option for you and then dismissing it. And so it's a, it's a huge benefit in terms of annoyance reduction online. And you'll see as a result, there are no tracking requests anymore found on this page. Um, you know, because we picked the mo most private option uh, for users overall. Uh, that plus just a lack of, you know, ad, creepy ads you'll see online, you'll see a lot fewer ads. 
And then the last thing I'll say, because AI is such a hot topic, many people are starting to use AI tools. Um, these privacy issues I'm talking about are just going to get worse in the world of AI because a lot of the AI companies have really stated their intention to collect a lot about the user um, so that they can you know, use that information to tailor these AI results and responses and AI chat and so forth. So it's important that really you use um, products like DuckDuckGo search browser, protect your privacy, and Duck AI is our foray into the AI world that will help protect your privacy in uh, AI as people start to use these new tools. Well, thanks for that additional detail. I think most folks, uh, regardless of their views on AI, can agree that privacy will probably get worse with it. And uh, yeah, I love that you share the cookie pop-up example. I think that's a really good example of good intentions, terrible execution. And if I never saw one of those again, I'd be a very happy person. Absolutely. You and me both. Well, I hope folks are convinced enough to go learn more or to try out DuckDuckGo. Peter, it was lovely chatting with you. Thank you so much for your time today. Lovely chatting with you. And hopefully we didn't scare too many people right before Halloween with this online world of trackers. But uh, yeah. Exactly. Well, thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to our conversation. We have many more episodes planned on a wide variety of topics. So stay tuned for more. See you later. Thank you.